Thanks so much for joining us here. You're watching a previously recorded episode of our Bluebeam webinar series, Cold Brew and Review. You can join us live on the first Wednesday of each month. Our expert, David Campbell, will show you how to use this amazing tool. And all of our live sessions have a moderated Q&A, so you can have all of your questions answered in real time. We hope to see you next month. And for now, on to the episode. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us for another Cold Brew and Review. Our topic of, to, of, of the day is going to be um, what's new in Review 21. Now, as we always do to start these out, I, I talk a little bit about us, TopCon Solutions, kind of who we are and, and what we do. So starting out with um, a little bit of a kind of high arching, high arching overview here. TopCon Solutions is the direct sales retail division of TopCon Positioning Systems. And this slide I actually definitely need to update as I think we are at 15 or 16 locations throughout the United States now. And um, the way that things used to be is that TopCon traditionally sold their products through a channel of independent dealers. Um, but essentially, TopCon Solutions and TopCon Solution stores, we essentially made a change um, to consolidate a lot of those formerly independent dealers into more of a national manufacturer direct retail organization. But one of the reasons why we are here today is because TopCon Solution Stores, we offer a new modern model for servicing both the civil construction as well as the vertical construction marketplace um, that a lot of the older independent dealers could not provide. We can do that with our partnerships of different solutions, just like um, Bluebeam here, we are also a Autodesk reseller. So in that sense, um, we kind of like to focus on the entire project, whether you're looking at vertical construction again, or, or civil, heavy civil construction, um, the hardware, the software, and all the workflows that go you know, between those. So. My name is David Campbell. I'm a senior application specialist with TopCon Solutions. And let's go ahead, like Rain said, grab your coffee, grab your water, your drink of choice, and let's dive in. So one of the biggest things that we got to talk about for Review 21 is really what happened with the subscription versus perpetual, right? The licensing. That was one of the biggest changes that we saw coming into this new version. Um, you'll notice that review itself, uh, like the download, everything like that is, is very, very similar. Um, it's just going to be different in the way that you log in essentially. And, and it's kind of nice in a way, you know, we're not limited to the open licensing. We're not limited to, um, the user based or, or computer based license in this case. Um, you'll notice that the subscription really allows you what happens after you download it is um you'll end up logging in with your bluebeam id your username and your password pretty much same kind of thing you use for studio and um it'll log you right into bluebeam review and essentially set the version of review that you have received so in talking about this i'm not going to go too far into the differences between the subscriptions this this webinar we are going to go ahead and host a webinar at, uh, next month for breaking down these different subscriptions, talking about the features that come with these different subscriptions and um, kind of breaking them down in terms of what is there and, and what's not. So we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we dive into that more next week. But in going off of this, this is kind of the first part, right? This is, I wanted to make sure one of the big things we talked about um, during this webinar was the licensing and if you do choose to upgrade or you, you've moved forward to review 21, um, getting that set up because we've, you know, we've, we've had a lot of calls and emails recently asking to help, um, help get help set up, setting up their actual account, their org admin portal, which I'm going to talk about, or the center, um, I'm going to talk about here in a little bit and, um, what you do to bring people in, how do you assign these subscriptions? Because what you guys are going to see is that, um, for any version review 20 and before, we were used to the Bluebeam gateway. But moving forward with review 21 and up, we will be using the subscription portal or the org admin center, the org admin center. So as the org admin, and that's going to be the person who um, owns 
the account, whoever purchases those licenses and gets those, you will be known as the organization admin. The organization admin, now this is, this is initially, right? You're gonna receive a invitation from no reply, bluebeamops.com and you'll click on that accept invitation. Once you've done that, then you can go into the website, which is, oh, uh, where is that? I just, oh, there it is, org slash at org admin dot bluebeam dot com, which I will put this in the chat here really quick to make sure that everyone has that. org admin dot bluebeam dot com. So again, this is initially, you'll need that, that account owner to set up the overall um, account. And then once you get in, I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into this here real quick. So I'm gonna hit escape on that and we're gonna tab right over to, now there's gonna be a little bit of difference here. I just wanna make you guys aware because I am part of a reseller. Um, it's mine, mine is going to say for resellers, but um, essentially you're going to see the same button it's going to be um add user management or um user and tier management it's, you're still going to see subscription management but instead of like create new reseller user it's just going to be create new user okay now essentially what happens when you log into this portal you're going to go ahead and look for account administration account administration and that should be right over here in the left sidebar and you want to look for users and tier management now mine is going to say of course partner user management and then subscription management but i'll go ahead and break these down here within adding the users the user management here this is how we can go ahead and create a new user you'll type in the user type whether they're going to be a user or an admin now this is the other point that i wanted to make Initially coming in, if, if you purchase the licenses, but you really don't want to be, let's say, you know, in charge of adding everybody of the different teams or different departments, uh, the different users in here and assigning these subscriptions out, you can add other people as admin and they will be able to go ahead and invite and set these subscriptions, things like that. Now, of course, if you want to handle that alone, you would go ahead and set a lot of those others as reseller user. Okay. Now, once you bring them in, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and find myself on this list. So here's my, my other account that I wanted to test out for this. At this point, once they are brought in, we can go ahead and get into the actual um, the user's information and we can modify the product tiers. So we can specify the actual product here. And this is where you're going to see most people, when you invite them in at first, they're going to come in under read only. Okay. That is because they haven't been assigned the subscription um, essentially yet. So what you'll do here is you'll assign that subscription. Now you'll need core and complete at least um, to utilize the cloud and, and things of that nature, studio and, and stuff like that. I wanted to make sure that I, that I talked about that. But essentially, we would pick that user and assign that subscription here. Okay. Now, we also have the capability to come under our subscription management. Now, I, I'm going to go back to this portal here in a minute, but I wanted to also point out here under subscription management, this is where if you have different, um, different tiers that you are utilizing, whether it's basic, core, or complete, this will actually show you, it'll break down per those tiers and show you the different users there. We can also go with show split sub distributions and essentially um, show how the subscription is being distributed if you have different departments, things like that, that you're working with. All right, now, another note is, if you ever, and this, is, this was a big thing before too, right? That essentially with review, with our standard CAD and extreme, if we had a user who we bought standard and, and then we realized that they actually could use the CAD version or they needed extreme, we would cross grade them, right? Or we'd upgrade them to get that CAD or extreme version. In this case, this is where you would go to change that tier assignment. 
So you'll notice that in this case, um, if we wanna have core and basics, we can go ahead and bring those over to assign. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then you're gonna see my basics core and complete. And then I would be able to go into any one of my users, edit, and then go ahead and modify their product tier or essentially um, choose exactly what I would want them to utilize. But in this ca case, we can also, um, I'm gonna put core back in here and, and or actually, never mind, complete. There we go, save. So you can also update at any point, you can change those tier subscriptions and up, upgrade essentially to a higher subscription for those users if you need to, right? And a lot of this um, is gonna be, all, all this information is gonna be kept in that org admin portal. Now, the other piece I wanna make sure that I call out, it, under the um, users and tier management, so, there's my user overview. As I was saying with the product tier and the breakdown, if you have different users on each tier, you're gonna be able to see right here exactly how many users you have either under the basics, the complete or the core. And the, the collaborator, this is where you can use the free licenses that really only provide the read-only access. And on that note, they will not be able, they can join your studio uh, session but it's only again in read only. They will not actually get any markup capabilities. That was another um, difference that I have seen moving from review 20 to 21. With review 20 and before, all you needed was that free, um, you know, uh, login to studio, essentially. You would download Bluebeam Review, the free trial or the um, uh, just the reader, essentially. And once they logged into that studio session, they would be able to mark up on those documents. And then once they left the session, the markups, you know, the uh, tools that they would be able to use disappears. It turns back into view only. In this case, with the newer subscriptions, you can give them read only access, but they will not be able to mark up until they have at least, um, I think, basics or core. I'll have to double check on that. And we can make sure that we talk about that more when we're breaking down the subscriptions next month. All right, so besides that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into review here really quick um, because I wanted to make sure I talked about review 21. Uh, and obviously we've, we've had a few previous webinars, the, the past I think three have been covering Bluebeam Cloud. That was a huge change with review 21, right? Um, the capability to use Bluebeam Cloud and of course the subscriptions how we send out those licenses, how we manage those licenses. There were a lot of changes with that, right? Fortunately, they didn't go and change the interface on us again. So we didn't have to worry about like the whole 17, 18 shift. We're not, we're not worried about anything like that. They've stayed in the same interface. You'll notice that, like I said, when you go to open review, it's actually gonna bring up a window to have you log in. And you, I believe you can use SSO for this. Um, I'll have to dive in more with my with my IT team and see if we can utilize or what at what point we can utilize SSO and we can get you those details um, in that next webinar as well. But essentially, once you log in, um, it activates you know your version of review with the features that um, your subscription gives to you, right? Other than that, guys, there's there's not going to be many differences between. Um, review 20 and review 21, other than how it can communicate with cloud, right? In the sense of importing drawings or importing documents, uh, we can bring these in from our projects or from our, um, yeah, I'm sorry, from our projects within documents in cloud. Now, there's also one other piece we talked about, I believe it was probably during the first or second webinar when we were talking about actually placing markups on those drawings and things like that, the tool chest, right? The other big thing that I've noticed, it's been kind of a, um, it's kind of a, a nice piece here to think about is we can actually send these tool sets up to cloud 
and use them on our mobile on our mobile devices to mark up that document. It's almost like a session in a way where we can we can access that document, we can utilize the tools from our tool chest um, and place markups on that document. But at the same time, again, we're not really going to have the full depth of like the markups list and everything like that um, on that whole platform. But again, it does give us that capability to go ahead and translate any of these markups, uh, these tool sets, excuse me, these tool sets that we do have up to the cloud. All right, now, as far as tips and tricks go for doing that, um, you'll notice that one, you, you can keep them in symbols or detail mode, either way, um, they'll wanna go up. Some of your bigger um, tool sets with a lot of data, like custom data in them and things like that, if you have like cost coding or if you have, um, custom statuses, things like th th that kind of stuff will not go up to the cloud. It's really focused more on uh, the actual markup, like the hyperlinks won't go with it if you have any um, hyperlinks or any anything like that set with that markup. It's really just pulling the markup itself. Because as I said, guys, there really wasn't a whole lot that has changed. I mean, there's been some improvements in the way that review works. Um, and of course, in the licensing, meaning that you don't have to have you know a review on a work computer and a home computer as long as you log in um, with review there you're going to be able to utilize that license from home or from work so it makes it kind of nice in that sense as well to be able to work from anywhere and you know be able to utilize review without having to have a bunch of licenses set out onto a bunch of different computers um, as well as of course enabling us with the cloud that was a that was a nice little feature that they pulled up for us this year and collaboration or the integration between them um, has been has been pretty pretty nice to see now I do also want to make a quick mech mention and I'll make sure I open this up for questions as well um, but for any of our users that are utilizing studio prime that also has not been changed I have not seen anything for an end of life. For that so if you have existing integrations going through studio prime uh to projects that's not going to projects or sessions it's not going to change okay um and as for now really that remains the way to make integrations with bluebeam studio um with cloud i think it's a little bit different um it doesn't really it's not you know looking at studio prime for those integrations thank you again everyone for joining us as always, we'd love to hear your ideas for any future episodes, any questions that you may have had throughout the episode that you didn't uh, wanna share in real time, reach us at that email address. It's info at topconsolutions.com and that's 24 seven and we will get to you uh, as quickly as possible. And thanks everybody, have a great week. We'll see you next month.